In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what it's like to come back after an injury using the Maffetone method, or if you've taken time off. How long does it take you to see the results and what do they look like, as well as some tips and tricks to improve the chances of success when you're training using this method of slow running. So let's start before the tornado comes because there is a tornado coming. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. It's a little crazy. It's a little scary. And like we just got to dive into today's video before <laughs> so I can get in and try to edit it. Coming back from an injury is not an easy thing to do. And to do it right, it's even harder to do. Most of us want to go out and just run. That's all I want to do. I don't want to walk. I don't want to do any of these things. I just want to go out turn the doorknob and get out and run. And that's my tagline. Now, like I always say, everyone, get out and run. There's two parts to this. One is a comeback number one, and that runs from, you like my hat? A pilgrim hat. I love my hat. It's really warm. If I'm gonna run my 100 mile race, I need to incorporate the hills and the trails and the rocks and the roots because that's what I'm gonna be running on until the end of June. And then I've had another two months off and it feels like starting all over again. So from basically the end of June to where I am now being September 14th. And it's hard to look at the numbers and not get discouraged and not want to quit and just pack it in and maybe pick up another sport. I love to run so much that I'm willing to put in the time and effort and energy that it's gonna to take to get me back. This is what I'm looking at. So when I first started this whole thing, September 2019, and I started using a run-walk method. Temperature was 19 degrees when I did this run. I basically kept my heart rate pretty steady, you know, 137, 138. It was pretty good. 834 for my pace, average 125, 42 as the time for a 10K. That was way back then. Let's bump this up now. March when I started my comeback and this guys is crazy but I started off running um, walking a 10 kilometer at a one one hour 31 minutes Strava score was 25 122 beats per minute and an average pace of 906 that was back in March now you bump this up three months and two weeks and then on June 21st I ran 11 kilometers one hour, 18 minutes, 983 for a Strava score. Average heart rate was 137 with a 653 kilometer pace. I was amazed. I was so happy. I was running, it was the best run ever. I was elated and it was just like, wow, this is awesome. And then boom, I ended up with shin splints. How I got shin splints, I started running too fast, too soon on the trails, running on the downs, like on the downs, and obviously I, my body didn't respond well to that. Uh, my calves were very, very, very tight, just like my quads gave me issues after my 50 miler. And that's what put me out the first time. Tight quads, doesn't surprise me that I ended up being injured again. So two months, I did not run at all. I basically went to my physiotherapist. I will. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to my foot doctor. I uh, checked my vitamin D levels. I had a bone scan, x-rays, all of these things. And they all came back saying shin splints. My foot doctor gave me a number of stretches that I should be doing on a, the wobble board. It's worked really well, as well as some calf or some calf raises. I basically stretch for about half an hour in the mornings, and then I get out and go do my walk or do my run or whichever thing I'm doing. That's kind of where I'm at now. So now that I know what causes shin splints, I'm gonna stay healthy. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure my quads are stretched and I'm not putting any pressure on the medial joint on my knee like it was before. I've adjusted my driving on how my car, like on my seat. I've adjusted all those things. Now, just now, I'm feeling pretty up, of course. All the nice weather is starting to disappear. And now we have tornadoes moving in. Like, this is nuts. September 2019, run walking, 19 Celsius. Those are my numbers. That's what I talked about. So then in August, where was I? 
So in August, when I started to run again, I was, or sorry, when I started to walk again, I was at an, a pace of 847, one hour, 27 minutes, 51 seconds I, to walk it, thir an average uh, 134 beats for my heart rate and a 69 for my Strava score. In September, I look at this and go, amazing. This is the same, same route. My pace in September, 842. One hour, 27 minutes, Strava score 50. 129 beats a minute. That is five beats faster than I was in August and 50 seconds faster for the average that I was walking in a five second per kilometer pace faster than August. If you are thinking that this is method is too hard for you, just know it takes time. I'm thinking it's gonna take me about six months to kind of get to where I need to be. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Probably February of next year, I should be in pretty good shape. The other thing that you guys need to understand is if you gain weight, you will have a hard time keeping your heart rate low because there are things that are going to cause high heart rate. Okay, one of them is weight. The heavier you are, I find that my heart rate is much higher. Also, if I am lack of sleep, if I'm stressed out, life, life causes all kinds of different stresses and your heart rate can be higher. If you're having caffeine, if you're having sugar, these things are triggers and they will make your heart rate beat higher. Also, if you are fasting, that will also cause your heart rate to be elevated, right? Because your body is learning how to burn fat. And if you go out for a run and you're fasted, yeah, it may be a higher level. You could be dehydrated. That is another aspect of heart rate training. All of these things play into it. So you have to pay attention to what's going on in your body and not throw in the towel just because you're not seeing results. Start journaling and figuring out what are those things that are causing problems and address them and once you address it, then you can start to measure with your results. I know it works. I see the results. This is the third time I'm doing this to come back. And I believe I am a stronger runner for it. Maffetone method, slow heart rate, slow running, heart rate training. All of these things are going to set me up for success. And I know it because I've seen it. I've done it. I'm just about to do it all over again. And I'm taking you guys along with me. <laughs> it's going to take a bit to build up that aerobic base. Building up the aerobic base is important. Once you've established a base, then you can start thinking about maybe switching over to an 80-20 or, you know, a 90-10. You have to figure that out. I'm doing what I do because I, I know what works for me right now. And I've got the right people behind me supporting me on this. <sighs> so it's a great adventure. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will be okay. So like I always say, say it with me. Say it with me. Get out and run. Have a good one, everyone. Bye for now. See ya.